Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Tash. I am a medical student at King's College London and I've literally just received my degree results for my IBSC, my integrated BSc in primary care, but no spoilers here. If you wanna go and find out what my result was, head over to my Instagram and make sure you subscribe as the next video I think on this channel will be my live reaction to getting my result. So in this video, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna review my intercalated degree year. So the lowdown. I had finished three years of medicine at King's College London. I then decided to study an IBSC in primary care at King's and then I am going to restart medicine in August and finish my final two years of medicine before I become a doctor. So I asked you guys on my Instagram what you wanted to know about an IBSC. Now let's start from the absolute basics. What actually is an intercalated degree? Intercalating means taking a year during your time at medical school to pursue a different degree, basically. So an intercalated degree is something that some medical students choose to do, as well as some dental students, I think. And basically it's a BSc, so a science degree, that is specifically made for doing in one year, or some IBSCs, you join the final year of that normal BSc. So for example, I have a friend that went to Loughborough to do sports and exercise science, and she basically joined the last year of that three year degree. Whereas my degree was specifically made for people doing it in one year during their medical studies. So at King's, we intercalate, or we have the option to intercalate after our third year. Some medical schools do it slightly different, so you may have the option to intercalate after your second year or even after your fourth year. Now, at some universities, this intercalated year is mandatory, meaning you have to do it. Whereas for me at King's, it was optional, so I could do it or I could just carry on and go straight into fourth year of medicine. So I guess it's kind of useful to talk about why would you want to do an IBSC? You might be thinking, Tash, medicine is already five long years. Why would I want to add another year on? Right, where do we start? There are loads of advantages, obviously. It's so nice to take a year out of medicine, do something different, or maybe choose something that you're really interested in. So I've got an interest in primary care, hence why I went and did a BSc in it. It doesn't mean that I'm definitely gonna specialize in it, but it's just nice to find out more and spend some more time doing that area. There's a whole wide range of degrees, IBSCs you can choose from, from anatomy to women's health to global health. Another advantage is that it's a really good opportunity to do some research. Now, when I was applying to med school, when I was at school, I was like, oh my word, I absolutely hate research. I'd never want to sit down and carry out my own research. But I think going to university, I started to learn that research is so much more than sitting in a lab, staring down a microscope. Of course, that's one part of research, which, which is extremely important, but I was way more interested in sort of the social side of research. Another thing is, obviously med school can be quite intense, and this is sort of an opportunity for a more quieter year. You've got less contact hours. It's more essay writing rather than exams. You've obviously got a lot less placement. Most IBSCs won't have any clinical placement at all. Right, this is when the big side comes, something that I'm still, really angry about. That is that additional degrees used to count towards your EPM, which is your educational performance measure. Now, your EPM score is what matters when you're applying for your junior doctor jobs alongside your situational judgment test. So, for example, some places in the UK are more competitive to get a job in as a junior doctor, for example, some of the London areas. So the higher your EPM and your situational judgment test score, the more priority you are going to have in getting into those competitive 
areas. So by doing a IBSC or by being a graduate, having done a previous degree or by doing a master's, you are getting points to add to this EPM. But, now this is a big but. The UK Foundation Programme decided that from my year graduating, these additional degrees will no longer count. So yeah, that was a bit of a slap across the face. So one of my friends actually asked, will this help when you apply for your F1 positions? So as I said, it would have done, it, it should have done, but now it doesn't. So yeah, that's a bit sad. But I'm still hoping that even though it doesn't count for F1 and F2, when you apply for specialty training, obviously it will still be on your CV and shows that you interested in that specialty if you were, if you weren't, that you went away and did some research. It's a really good opportunity to get a publication, even though I am yet to do that. Uh, <laughs> So even though formally it doesn't count towards the points, I'm sure that it will still benefit me at some point during my career, whatever I decide to do. So instead of an IBSC, you can also do a master's. So a really common question was this pros and cons between doing an IBSC and doing a master's. In terms of the EPM before, you got more points for doing a master's compared to a BSC, whereas now that's gone out of the window. Obviously it's gonna be slightly more challenging, you're gonna to have to write longer dissertations, essays, arguably is a more impressive qualification to have. So let's talk funding. Now in the UK, you can get student finance loan to both cover your tuition fees and also you can get a maintenance loan to contribute towards things like rent, food, just your general life outside of your tuition fees. So student finance in the UK contribute towards your first four years of university. So this means that my integrated degree counted as that final year of those four years. So I got exactly the same funding. They paid for my tuition fees. Well, I say they paid because I'm just so used to, you literally don't see that money. So I keep forgetting that it's actually a loan, which is kind of sad and kind of scary, but hey ho. Um, and I got exactly the same maintenance loan as my first three years of medical school. And then after these first four years of medical school, the NHS bursary will pay for your fees for the remaining years. And they will also give you a bursary for maintenance. But a massive note is that this maintenance bursary from the NHS is a lot less than the student finance maintenance loan. But it is a bursary compared to a loan, meaning that effectively it's free money, whereas a loan you effectively have to pay it back. Whereas for a master's, it's slightly different because it's not at undergraduate level, whereas the IBSC is. You can still get funding from student finance, but when I looked into it, don't quote me on this, make sure you do your own research because I'm not sure whether it's changed, whether I got confused, because it can all be a bit confusing. But I basically worked out that I would be able to get a student finance loan again, but it would only be around £10,000. So it would only cover my tuition fees. I would not get any maintenance support whatsoever. So I would really be struggling in terms of paying rent, living, etc. So a couple of the questions were centered around what to choose, should you choose something that you're interested in as a specialty? What if you have no idea what you're interested in at the moment? So what I would say is just choose something you're interested in. Do not worry about whether it's gonna be the specialty that you do, whether you actually get to the end of your integrated year and you're like, oh my word, I really don't like this area of medicine. I don't wanna do it again in the future. It's just a really good opportunity to kind of step away from medicine do some research, show that you can sort of think scientifically, show that you're interested in research. So the way that applying for your integrated degree works is that in the previous academic year, you apply for whichever IBSCs you want to do. So I was applying as an internal student as I was already at King's, but you can apply externally. And basically you just write a little sort of statement. It's not like a personal statement that you do getting into uni. It's nowhere near as serious or as scary as that, but just why you want to um, do that degree. Make sure you 
have a look at your options available, whether you want to go to a different city, a different uni, obviously a really great opportunity to do that, but I just love London, I was too lazy to go to a new place. So in terms of transitioning to the style of assessments and the style of work, I definitely found it really challenging at the start. During our first three years of medical school, we didn't have many essays to write and they weren't really getting us to kind of critically think. So yeah, I really struggled at the start of the year. My essays were not scoring so well and then some practice, really sort of reading my feedback, engaging with any sort of optional sessions to support your writing really helped me and towards the end I felt really comfortable with writing an essay so you definitely improve and don't put too much pressure on yourself at the start. You can still come out with a good mark and kind of improve over time. But one thing, during medicine, because obviously most of our assessments are done with exams, so revision is kind of endless, there's always more that you can learn, whereas an essay you can kind of just be like, right, it's done now. So throughout my first three years I was always like, oh my word, I wish I just had to write an essay, rather than doing like past med questions. And last year I was literally like, I just want to revise, I just want to do past med questions, I don't want to write an essay. So yeah, it's really interesting and I'm actually really excited to go back to more actual learning rather than just writing because I'd say that last year I feel that it didn't come away with a whole new depth of knowledge whereas obviously medicine you're constantly learning new stuff it was more reading the literature and kind of you know putting that into an essay so I'd say it was like a very different type of degree and way of doing things So obviously coronavirus has been a thing, so I'd say that 99.9% .9 of our teaching has been done remotely. We did have a few in-person things at the very beginning of the year, and I, let's just be completely honest and real here, I found it so hard to concentrate with online uni, especially being in a flat in London where my boyfriend is working from home as well. And then another question was, how do you kind of cope with your friends continuing with their medical degree and not doing this year out? So this completely depends depends on what university you go to in the UK. At some universities, as I say, doing an IBSC is compulsory. At some universities like King's, it's not compulsory, but I would say that most undergraduates will do one. I'd say that most of my friends who are undergraduates did do this year out, so that wasn't really a problem for me. Whereas at other universities, I know that it's a lot less common, so this may be something. But I think the biggest thing is that medicine seems like an awfully long time, you know, you're like, oh my word, I'm gonna be so much older by the time I leave, I just wanna get it done, I wanna start with the job, I wanna get on with it, I wanna start earning money, and yeah, while that is all true, you have the rest of your life for your job. So some of the questions were surrounding going back to medicine after a year out and how do you kind of keep up with your medical knowledge because obviously when you're integrating it's really hardly ever clinical, it's very different to medicine. Now this is something that I kind of need need help with myself. <laughs> um, at the start of my integrated year I told myself that I was going to do some medical revision once a week. Did that happen? No. But I think you have to remember that most people are in the same position. You've got a summer before you go back to try and refresh your knowledge. It will come back to you. That's what I keep telling myself. I don't really have any further advice other than that. Just um, hope and pray that you will still remember something. So I think I'll just talk about my IBSC specifically and that was primary care. I'll talk you through the modules that I did. So I did an introduction to primary care, which was really interesting. I did a leadership management and quality improvement in primary care. I did research methods, so kind of looking into how you do research and the methods behind that. I did a research project. I did a module in health inequalities, which I'm absolutely obsessed with. I find so interesting. So all of our assessments were essay based. I had absolutely no exams, which was lovely. I also had a clinical general practice module, which basically meant that once a week I was in a GP 
Most of the time we were actually carrying out our quality improvement project. So this was trying to increase the rates of patients attending their learning disability annual health review. And we actually got to carry out some of these annual health reviews ourselves. And I'd say that the way that our placement differed from medicine during this IBSC was that we had a lot more responsibility. We were kind of seeing patients for ourselves um, and we were doing a lot more of the sort of managerial side of things rather than the actual clinical stuff a lot less shadowing a lot more doing it for yourself so research project options there were so many to choose from I actually chose one um, to do with social prescribing so I was looking into a social prescribing initiative park run and specifically the park run practice initiative um, go and google it if you're not sure what that is and I was looking at whether there was a future for it whether there was a need for it what the changes needed to be post covid and yeah as i say you're really well supported with this research project they obviously know that this is kind of the first time you've carried out something like this by yourself so don't worry if you're thinking oh my word i've got absolutely no idea how to carry out research i don't know what to do what i'm interested in they will support you through that process so yeah i hope this video has been helpful i hope it's given you some insights into intercalating as a medical student give it a like hit the subscribe button and I will see you all next time. Bye everybody.